Okay, so today we're cooking with Meisner, and we're going to, which is me, I'm Meisner, hi. How are we doing? So, we're going to be making zucchini noodle and stripped cube steak southwestern stir-fry. We're going to start off with the meat first, and then we'll get to the vegetables after I do the meat. Two separate items to get cooking up real good. You want to put about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in here. And I've had this uh, meat marinating for about six hours into a seasoning that you can get at any uh, local grocery store. And it is a marinade that is good for chicken beef, pork, and seafood. And we'll make sure you get all this meat in here. Uh, cook a little bit at a time. Let's turn it down a little now. Basically, we're going to fry it. So make sure you cook your meat thoroughly, all the way through. You don't want it to be pink at all. I understand that this is beef and everybody likes their meat a little bloody every now and then, but this you want cooked all the way through. So you want to add a little extra olive oil just so the marinade gets all more liquid like so when you're done you can dump the rest of your meat into the bowl of the other meat you've been cooking. Oh, doesn't that look good? Mmm. And that way you'll have a little extra sauce because you want that flavoring for the noodles when uh, you start cooking the zucchini noodles and the squash and stuff, but we're going to do that here in a minute. We're getting down to the, about the last of the meat. we got one more pan to cook up. And, but just remember, after each round of meat that you cook, you need to add a little bit more olive oil because this marinade is very thick. It's very tasty. It makes it so it doesn't want to thin out at all. So you've got to add a little bit extra. So I'm putting the last of the meat in there and I added just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. That way it can soak up all the rest of the flavoring and the marinade. which is kind of burnt a little bit, but that's okay because you want that good flavor to it. So you're just going to mix it up in there. And while you're mixing it up, get them all separated. Alright, so the last of this meat's cooked up now. It smells good, looks good, delicious. I'm going to take all of this and just dump it right in here. There we go, a little extra. And the meat is done, and now we will go on to the vegetables. Okay, so now we're going to do the vegetables. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, green pepper and red pepper. We're heating up the wok right now to probably about a medium low, medium kind of a medium high. And 
It's about two tablespoons of olive oil in there. And it looks like it's heating up pretty good. Yeah, it's a little bubbles going on. So I'm going to take my green pepper and red pepper and we're going to add that in. And we're going to stir this. I know there looks like a lot of olive oil, but we need all that. And we're just going to stir it for probably about two, three minutes till it just starts to get soft and tender. Add in the zucchini noodles, which I grated by hand, and chopped yellow squash. All the stuff that I've done, I've prepared just before this video. So we're going to add all this in now. This is all your noodles, your zucchini noodles, your yellow squash, your green peppers, your red peppers. You, you want it kind of firm at the same time. You don't want it super soft because then you're overcooking the squash and the peppers and then it just kind of all the flavors don't they kind of all run together. You still want to have that texture of a different type of flavor each bite that you get. You want to taste the different flavors. They're kind of like tasting the rainbow. So when you're doing this it's going to take probably about seven eight minutes to get all this cooked the way you want it and that should be plenty of time if you go over seven or eight minutes you probably cook it too long they are fresh vegetables so you want them to still have the fresh flavor and not too cooked down okay so now we're going to add the green onion and cilantro throw it all in there and we're also going to add the corn to it this is white sweet corn I'm going to stir this up give it a quick stir mm, boy that smells really good and that smells good then we're going to add the remaining ingredients which is black beans and you can put however much you want in there. I mean, black beans are good. It's good protein for you, too. I'm going to use most of the black beans. And I'm only going to use a little bit of the uh, diced green chili. Just because when I got the diced green chili in a can, I didn't realize that it was extra hot. And the people that are going to be eating this don't like extra hot food. So I'm only going to put a little bit in there. Otherwise, I would just, I'll probably put this on my plate itself. And then we're going to stir this up. Let it cook for a little bit. Okay, so now this is all cooked nice and tender and it's looking pretty good, smells delicious. Now we're going to add the meat to it and finish stir frying it up. And there's quite a bit of meat. Uh, they said it had that little extra olive oil in there so that way it doesn't burn at the bottom of your wok. You can use a pan, a wok, however you want to do it. I choose this wok method just because I think woks are better for cooking large portions, especially stir frying. I know some people that just use regular pans. Nothing wrong with that. But this is turning out very good. I wish you could smell this. This is, smells so good. Like I said, in this marinade comes in a red bag. You can get it at your uh, local grocery store. And it's made for chicken, beef, pork, and seafood. And it's very good. This is my version of cubed steak cut to strips, zucchini noodles, Southwestern style. Okay, so we're about ready to get the double boiler going so I can melt the chocolate chips. Melt the chocolate, the semi sweet chocolate chips for the bacon stuffed jalapenos dipped in chocolate. 
Here's the jalapenos. What I did is I cut the tops off, hollowed them out, and we're going to fill that up with bacon, which I already pre-cooked, and it's sitting right there. Oh, it's going to be delicious. So that bacon is going inside of these, and then it's going to be dipped in chocolate. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to stuff the bacon into the jalapeno while the water's heating up. You just stuff it down in there. Use your fingers. It's okay. I washed my hands from the very beginning, and I wash my hands every time I do something different. Okay, so that one's stuffed with bacon. I'm going to take this one and stuff this one with bacon. Okay, now I'm stuffing up the last jalapeno here. Almost done. We got a little bacon. We got a little bit of bacon left over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab each one and make sure it's stuffed all the way. That's pretty good. It's kind of greasy, but you know, bacon is greasy. I did let it sit and get try and get most of the grease out of there, but you know. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to melt the chocolate, and then we'll get back to dipping these in. All right, so if you got bacon grease on the outside of your jalapeno, you're going to try and wipe it off as much as you can, because then the chocolate will not stick very good. So you're going to take each one, wipe it down, set it inside. And dump all the chocolates. Get it all melted down. So all this chocolate's gonna melt down. And once it gets melted down, then we'll start dipping the uh, jalapenos that are stuffed with bacon in there. Slowly but surely, it takes a little bit. Ooh, drop and check. Mm. I'll eat that one. That's tasty. So the chocolate is almost melted, and we already have the jalapenos that are stuffed with the bacon. It's just about done. So it's done. Chocolate's melted. So we're going to transfer the chocolate out of the water onto the cutting board. And it is warm. Yes, it is. Woo! All right, so I'm gonna take the first one. I'm gonna just basically put chocolate right here where the bacon goes in. I'm gonna add that in there like that. And then kind of dip it in there like this. This is how I like to do it. Just cover it. Get it covered in chocolate. And then you just take that out. Like that. And you put it right on there. Just like that. Okay. And then you do the next one. Covered in chocolate. I try not to go chintzy on the chocolate. Everybody loves chocolate. I'm always thinking, man, the more chocolate on it, the better it would be. And then you put that one right there. 
get the next one and you just kind of stuff that in there. Cover it in chocolate. And you want to get this done before the chocolate starts to harden. That's why I use Semine Sweet because we're going to take this and everything that's on that parchment paper, we're going to put it in the freezer and let it chill better. Oh, yep, we're going to have a little extra chocolate on that one right there. These can be really thick chocolateies. Okay, so we made dessert. We made our main course. Now we're going to make something to drink. And one of my favorites is a margarita wine slushy. There's no tequila. There's no margarita mix. It tastes like a margarita, but it's made with wine, limeade, and ice. And that's what I'm going to make for you. But first we're going to take the cup. And I poured a little bit of limeade right here, and I just kind of put it right inside. Do that, and then we'll take, and we'll put it in the Himalayan pink salt. So you got that around the edge. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some ice first. And fill the cup up about halfway with ice. Oop, a little too much. Yeah, that'll work right there. Then we take the wine. Now, the wine that I'm using, I can't say the name of it, but it is a Myers Lemon and Key Lime Sauvignon Blanc. Very tasty. And you're going to pour, I would say, about a cup in there. Then you're going to take your limeade, and you're going to fill it up towards the top here. And you can use a blender whatever you want. I mean, you can do half and half. It doesn't have a whole lot of alcohol content, but it is very tasty. It does taste like a margarita. And you put your blade on. Make sure it's cinched down. And then, uh, I'm using an, a, uh, a blender, a uh, fit blender, kind of. And you do it for about a minute. Check it up a little bit more. And when you open it up, if it doesn't look too slushy like, then you add a little more ice to it. But that is beautiful right there. You're gonna take that, you're gonna grab your cup with the Himalayan pink salt, and you're just gonna pour that right in there. And this, my friends, is a margarita wine slushy, and this. Mm, this is good. Very refreshing. You all have a good day and a good night, and I'll see you next time. This is Meisner. Have fun. Enjoy life.